Generally, I don't pay much attention to the Green Party other than to roll my eyes or have a little laugh. But lately, I think we should start paying attention, especially since they won the by-election for Nanaimo Lady Smith, adding a second MP to their roster. Green Party leader Elizabeth May, who is the MP for Saanich Gulf Islands in BC, was born in Connecticut and was the former executive director for the environmentalist group, the Sierra Club. She is no stranger to being in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. You might remember her being arrested last March while she was protesting the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion and she was charged with civil contempt and fined $1,500. But she simply brushed it off as a common law offense under an unusual provision. And there was her awkward speech at the Parliamentary Press Gallery dinner, which was really just a drunk tirade full of foul language and a shout out to convicted terrorist Omar Khadr. Watching Conservative MP Lisa Raitt trying to get May off the stage was truly cringeworthy. You might recall her cruising in the Victoria Day Parade in a serious gas-guzzling Dodge Viper RT, which averages about 16 miles per gallon. Now, I thought for sure she would have chosen an electric vehicle, but May brushed off criticism of this vehicle choice on it being where she was told to go. Yet, she's been told to ride in that Viper on multiple occasions. Are organizers just playing a joke on her? Where I got kind of confused by May was when she declared that she wants Canada to stop importing foreign oil and use strictly Canadian oil, which is what we here in Alberta have been saying all along. Before you get all excited at the prospect of another politician possibly promoting our energy sector, her plan is less of a victory and more of an oil and gas Armageddon, because she is not rooting for our energy sector, she's simply pandering to voters. There is a huge catch to her plan, and you can read all about it at the Green Party Climate Action Plan website, where they've laid out their vision of epic, unrealistic proportions. They use scare tactics that will make you roll your eyes, and then they call the state of our climate the gravest security threat the world has ever seen. If that didn't sound scary enough, I continued reading the Green Plan, and it's a nail-biter. May is calling for Canada to have zero emissions by 2050, and how would they achieve that? With a total ban on fracking, pipelines, oil wells, and production, and removing Moving all fossil fuel generation from our power grid by 2030. I'm starting to think that 2030 is the environmental activist's favorite number at this point. May wants all new cars to be electric and by 2040 to replace every single gas and diesel vehicle with electric cars as well. I'm not sure how this will all be paid for and it clearly shows zero consideration for the average Canadian who likely won't be able to afford the $30,000 start price tag to make that switch. Those of us living in rural areas could also suddenly see electric buses coming down our roads and if you're a farmer, fisher or forester, don't worry, May has it forgotten about you because you would have to replace every single piece of equipment you own to run on biodiesel. Some of you might also be wondering about jobs since May's plan includes eliminating all oil and gas work. Well you can help turn every Canadian building carbon neutral by 2030 in May's national building effort. If May's Green Climate Action Plan didn't scare you yet, this next part just might have you hiding under the blankets. In the upcoming federal election, May would support a Green Party Liberal Coalition, keeping Trudeau in power and allowing her to push her green agenda. To say Elizabeth May's plans are unrealistic is the nicest possible way to put it. Sure, it's all well and good to have this idea that Canada could run on unicorn dust and fairy farts funded entirely with leprechaun gold, but the plan really is the stuff of fairy tales or nightmares depending on how you look at it. And that's what makes Elizabeth May my ducker of the week.